All right, now we've made it to the first kind of reaction you learned with double bonds, which was hydrohalogenation reaction. And so we have a hydrogen halide, HX, and usually X is bromine or chlorine or even iodine. Now you guys remember H is the partial positive part, X is the partial negative. And our double bond, our pi bond, is thought of as our nucleophile. So that's what starts this whole thing off. So we're going to use our nucleophile and attack the hydrogen and break the bond between HX and deposit the electrons on X. And so we end up with this kind of mechanism here. And I think you know that we put the hydrogen on the less substituted carbon so that the carbocation can occur on the more substituted carbon. It's more stable to have a secondary carbocation than a primary. Now if we do the same thing but with the triple bond, can we just do the same thing twice since there's two pi bonds instead of one? Well, let's take a look. Obviously, we're going to need excess HX, or two equivalents of HX, because we have two pi bonds. So we do this the first time, and you get what you would expect here. Okay, so our first intermediate has a pi bond. And then we want to, just like up here, attack that positive charge. And because this is planar, it can attack from either side. And we get this halogenated alkene. Now we learned before that this positive charge on an sp2 carbon is not very stable at all. So there is something wrong with that, and that's what this question is about. Is we don't we um, a positively charged vinyl? We call it a vinyl carbocation. Is pretty high energy. It's not very stable, so it's not easy to form this in the first step. So that that would be the main problem with this mechanism. Um, but let's go ahead and finish this off. If that wasn't a problem, what would we have? Well, you'd expect it to just go along the same way, and we would end up with a positive charge here. Again, secondary being better than primary, and then we're going to have the last x come on over and attack at that carbon right here. So you end up with the X's on the same carbon because that's the Markovnikov position. But the mechanism doesn't quite seem right. So it turns out that um, the first step is sort of easy to picture. This comes in and attacks, but it turns out that instead of making a carbocation, um, we immediately grab another hydrogen since it's in excess. Um, and then that, that transition state helps to stabilize. So instead of having a ring, um, it's sort of spread out over several molecules. And so we call that a termolecular intermediate. So there's three molecules involved. Um, and that's going to help us explain how this forms. We don't really want to go through something unstable like this. And so by, by measuring kinetics, you can actually measure third order reactions, the three molecules involved here. The mechanism we wrote out doesn't really apply, but you could sort of use it just as a trick or a mnemonic to help you get to the final product if you want. But just know that there's more to it than that, um, and it's a little more complicated. Okay, now on this one, it's a little bit less straightforward because they're both primary. They, uh, both of these carbons are only attached to a themselves, so one other carbon. So it's not really clear where the positive charge should be. So let's try this both ways and you can see. If I grab this, if I take this pi bond and first I move it to here and then I grab the H, then I'm going to end up with the positive charge over here. If I try it a different way, let's say I bounce it over to here and then grab the H, then I'm going to end up with this intermediate. So you might ask which one's better? Okay, so can you guys take a look? Look at this one, and then look at this one, and ask yourself in which situation might that positive charge be better stabilized? Well, what I would say is with the positive here, there's no, nothing around it to stabilize that other than just inductively pulling electrons from this X group in the carbon. So there's some electrons being pulled this way, but over here you can see that there's actually some lone pairs that can come in. And so this can help us by resonance, stabilize that positive charge. So this is much better. 
So in that case, what we're going to get is the second X, or right here, this X right there, is going to react here more because of the stabilization of that carbocation. So I'm going to get the geminal rather than the vicinal dihalide. Again, geminal means twins, two halogens on the same carbon. Vicinal would be next to each other, like vicinity, close by. So we've got two main reactions for alkynes so far. We've got our alkyne adding excess HX to make a geminal dihalide. And then we also have a way to turn this geminal dihalide back into an alkyne with the very first reaction we did in, earlier in this chapter, which was double elimination using a very strong base, sodium amide, in ammonia, followed by water workup to neutralize this terminal alkyne. And notice that with excess HX, you make the geminal, not the vicinal, but you can take a geminal or a vicinal dihalide and turn it into an alkyne. So just keep that in mind. And here are some practice problems. Let's do one of these together, just the first one. Um, I've got my alkyne right here, and I've excess HCl. So one of the questions you might want to ask yourself is, was this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov addition of the chloride or the halide? So if you look up here, the halide adds to the more substituted carbon. This is all Markovnikov. So I'm going to either use that example and just add those, or I'm going to think of the mechanism. This is actually how I do it, is I think of this mechanism of, oh, pi bond is adding that hydrogen. I'm making um, a center here that's more positively charged in its transition state, so the chloride's going to go on to that carbon, and then it's going to do that again. And the only thing that I would say is just make sure because the alkynes are a little bit hard to deal with sometimes, make sure you have the same number of carbons, one, two, three, one, two, three. I make a mistake like that sometimes. So this is your electrophilic addition of a hydrogen halide, and we need excess. Abbreviation for excess is XS, <laughs> but just means we have enough for both pi bonds to react. All right, and then do you guys want to go ahead and pause it and try this one and see uh, what do these reagents do? What do we end up with here? Okay, if you guys remember, uh, this is double elimination. This is a strong base, and my beta hydrogens are over here. And I'm going to grab those with my sodium amide, um, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to form a terminal alkyne, which is going to be deprotonated, but the water workup is going to neutralize that. Now, one thing that looks funny to me is this carbon. It's Remember, this is SP, SP hybridized, 180 degrees. So I think it looks better if you try to make it accurate to that. So you're going to usually see alkynes in a straight line because this is SP hybridized. I wouldn't mark you wrong, but it's just nice to be as accurate as you can. For our last example, we have two chlorines here, so geminal dihalide here, to a different kind of geminal dihalide, a 1,1 dichloro and to a 2,2 dichloro. Can you guys think of a way to couple these reactions to do this transformation and write out the steps? What are the reagents you need and in what order? Go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so hopefully you guys see it's exactly the same thing but in the reverse order. First we've got to get these off of here and make a triple bond which then will react to add our HCLs, Markovnikov. So to do the double elimination we need excess sodium amide in ammonia. And then we're going to make this, because it's excess, it's going to be in my basic form. So I need to convert it to my acidic form by using water. And then once I have my alkyne that's terminal, I'm going to add the CLs to the Markovnikov position using excess HCl. So this is our first multi-step reaction using alkynes. So make sure you practice that. It's a very common kind of question you could get.